Joined now by a Wednesday regular, one half of the Rain Dregs Hockey Podcast here in the Go Goat Sports family of podcasts, and of course, TSN Hockey Insider, the one and only Mr. Darren Dreger. How you doing? How's your off season going here? Yeah, I'm doing okay. I'm actually just getting over a flu bug, man. I got buckled last week by it, and I thought it was going to run its course, and probably in the last 24 hours or so, it feels like I'm getting a second wave of it, so I'll we'll have to deal with that, but... Uh, no, you know, just kind of grinding away, getting ready for the playoffs and uh, all of the shenanigans that goes along with that. And apparently working the college free agent beat a little bit here. <laughs> yeah. With, uh, had the uh, Cole McWard info land in your lap that he yeah. can play tomorrow. No, I mean, it was the good reporting of Rick Dollywall and others in Vancouver, to be fair. I, I just was kind of half paying attention last night. Didn't know much about Cole McWard. I knew who he was, you know, because of his name being out there for a bit, right? Um so then I thought, ah, you know what, I'm going to poke around and see what I can learn this morning, knowing, of course, that I've got the Securus and Price show to look after. That's right. So, uh, yeah, it was pretty instantaneous. Uh, you know, I mean, we, we saw the release. We knew that they had signed the mm-hmm. two-year contract. But the expectation that he's going to play um, tomorrow, and, uh, you know, the Canucks are really happy with getting this kid signed. You know, he's good size, six one, two hundred pounds, roughly somewhere in that vicinity. Right shot, D, um, good puck mover is my understanding. He's he's made a couple of significant strides over the last two years at Ohio State. And if you look at his numbers on DB, you can see that, you know, he's a, he's a contributing factor as an offensive defenseman. So the fact that he's come from the USHL and has found his way at the college level and then has advanced and developed as quickly as he has, I think that was enough for Patrick Galvin and the Vancouver Canucks to say, okay, let's get this deal done. Yeah, coachable, right? Uh, yeah, and, yeah. And you're getting them younger, so you you if you if you can have them in your stable for two more years, uh, it's basically like having uh, you know middle round pick that yeah. you can form a little bit and and uh, with Abbotsford right there. I mean, the, the, this one you could argue is more valuable than some of the later college free agents, where you have to kind of make more of a snap judgment of whether or not you like them or not. Well, and doesn't it fall in line too with what you know Jimmy Rutherford said when he first came on with the Vancouver Canucks? Um, and then, of course, you bring in Packer Golvin. But the, the idea was, you know, you have to think outside the box. You can't just focus on one stream of bringing in players. Like, traditionally, it's the draft, and you be patient, mm-hmm. you develop all of those things. So you have to look at being as aggressive as you can on the trade front. Okay, well, that didn't pan out as, as significantly as the Canucks were hoping. They were aggressive with Andre Kuzmenko, and he has been a tremendous find. But keep going back to that well. Keep looking at kind of, again, outside the box. Not that signing college kids is outside the box, but you're, you're, you're desperately looking for ways of improving that blue line. And there's no such thing as a can't miss when you're dealing with players like this, but everything about Cole McGuire looks like he's going to be a very good NHL player. How good an NHL player? Well, when it comes to defense and goaltending, you have to be patient in seeing that through. But I do applaud them for going through this method and these means to attra- uh, attack a significant area of need, that blue line. Uh, Dregs, uh, the fiery personality of JT Miller reared its head again uh, last night, left the bench area with 30 seconds left uh, in the period after uh, missing out on a breakaway. Look, uh, we know he plays with emotions on his sleeve. Earlier in the season, there were some outbursts. How much of a concern or how closely are, is Canucks management following sort of the attitude and the personality of JT Miller and all the outbursts this year? And, and uh, what's your sense on whether Rick Tockett is going to have a handle on this? Because I know there were some here, including our buddy Farhan Lalji, who thought yeah. part of the you know, high up the list of Rick Tockett uh, on his to-do list was getting a hold of JT Miller and getting him focused and playing his best hockey without some of these outbursts. Yeah, I, I think that's generally fair, but I, you know, let's not look at JT Miller as a reclamation project here, right? I mean, for, for from from basically every aspect, he's a he's a good pro, hard nose, demanding of himself and others. No question about that. Should he historically have taken different paths? Yes, no doubt about that. Uh, and I think that that's an area of self-reflection that he'd be honest about and he continues to work on. One thing I know about Rick Tockett, there will be no shortcuts. And there will be no kind of massaging of ego or protecting a player. Um, it's got to be team first. So 
you know, he wants his players to have fire burning in the belly. There's no doubt about that. Um, so it's not going to be about the public relations or the optics of how it looked last night. Okay, where did that come from, and how did that reflect on the teammates and, and everyone around? And if there's a problem, then Rick Tocca will deal with that problem. I'm sure he had a conversation with J.T. Miller about it. Um, but, look, I, I haven't. I haven't gotten to the coaching staff recently on Miller or any Vancouver Canucks player, but I did speak to talk relatively soon after taking over as head coach of the Vancouver Canucks. And he said a lot of what I've just said about JT Miller of how they, they like that side of him. Can he channel that energy in a different way? No question about that. But as talk acknowledged, that's part of, of what I need to be here for as an NHL head coach. So, I don't think it's a burning issue, but it's one that maybe does have to get addressed on a semi-regular basis. And Frank Saravelli said on his podcast this week, he believes it was Jason Zucker and two first-round picks as part of that deal with the Pittsburgh Penguins that had the Canucks then shopping a Pittsburgh player uh, to see if they could get a centerman and, and now believe Zucker. Does that jive with what you were hearing at the time? On the Pittsburgh JT nah, Miller I'm not trade gonna, front, uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to mention the player because okay. the player is is actively trying to close down a playoff spot for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, you know, uh, and back in the day, we talked about the draft picks. Uh, I do know that the Vancouver Canucks were participating, as we've talked about on the program before, and uh, trying to find a home for a Penguins veteran player to help make that deal go down. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, true enough. Um, do you think Tockett, deep down, in some ways, maybe not always, because the way this, this team is playing right now, uh, maybe part of him wants to get out of Dodge, but does he want 20 more games to work on a couple more things here? To, to sure. try to, you know, like, it, it feels like this is petering out on him after yeah, he yeah. Had sort of climbed part of the mountain. Um Again, he might be split because I'm sure part of him's like, "Let's go golfing for God's hey. sake." But like, um, I think he wants 20 more practices more than yeah, he wants 20 last, more yeah. games. Yeah. 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 Nah, I think that's fair though. Uh, you know, coaches want to win, right? And it yeah. doesn't matter what they know is the reality. The reality is, you know, Vancouver is in the place that they're in, and you know they're hoping that through some changes this off season, that they're in a far better place for training camp. And then they are competing for a playoff spot next season. But to extend this year, to give them more practice time, I think that's 100% valid, not just for Rick Tockett, but for Adam Foote and for Sergey Gonchar as well. And I can tell you guys, those two men coming in with Rick Tockett should not be overlooked in terms of their influence and their impact and how important both those men are to talk it in this process. But as coaches, uh, you just, you never have enough time in the day to work with the younger players, to get through some of the layering of the veteran guys that, you know, for whatever reason, just, you know, are starting to respond, but you need a little bit more time. You wish you had a little bit more time. So from that perspective, I think that the coaches most definitely would want a little bit of an extension to the runway, but this is why the Canucks made the change when they made the change in January. Um, you know, you, we think back to, to when Bruce was feeling the heat in the first half of the season and talked about how now nah, it, it's better if they wait till late January, February, bring in the new guy, let him establish that philosophy so that everybody knows where they stand coming back for next season. And I think that they should all be thankful that they've had the opportunity to this point. You, you mentioned the word influence. Let me ask you this. We, we talked about this a little bit off the air. We'll get into this, I'm sure, as the offseason progresses yeah. here. They've got some influence. Like they, They'll have a voice with management about – the roster and who they like and who they think they can build with and all that sort of thing. And ultimately, Alvin and Rutherford might say, yeah, but we can get X for this guy. we got to move him. Yeah. But is it a little or a lot of influence that that coaching staff with all those veteran names that you mentioned, do they have a little or a lot of influence on what the roster looks like come September and who stays? Well, I think they have a lot of influence in terms of their hockey opinion, right? Uh, Patrick would, would have nothing but the highest level of respect for everything about Rick Tockett, from mm -hmm. his coaching history to his playing, um, you know, to the time that they're spending in, in continuing to work together and get to know each other a little bit better, even though there's history there too. But at the end of the day, it's business-driven. And Rick Tockett isn't immersed in, you know, all the, the minutia and the contracts and all of this 
around the National Hockey League. I'm sure he's yeah. already got a good, pretty good handle on what the Vancouver Canucks need to do. So I think that that's where the back and forth would be. All right, well, here's the amount of money that we're going to have or hope to have in the off season if we do it this way. If we take this player and that player out of the equation, well, then maybe we can do it that way. Which way would you prefer, right? Mm -hmm. And then the style of play, uh, of course, the coaches would would have influence there. But at the end of the day, it, it does have to come down to the general manager who has to make that decision knowing what his coach needs to build a better product for the start of next season. Lastly, Dregs, you're on the list. <laughs> oh. John Garrett's oh. list of 40 individuals who worked play-by-play beside him in a broadcast booth. Oh. Tell I us about, about coming up I, with the details. Do you, do you have details? Well, I, I, I think I do. Um, so I worked with John a couple of fronts, um, you know, in terms of, of the early days here. We're not mm-hmm. talking about my sports net days. Uh, I worked with him in Edmonton, I believe, and that was the infancy of A Channel. I spent like nine months in Edmonton hosting Oilers games, 97, 98. Uh, Bruce Buchanan was a play by play guy. Harry Neal came through there. I mean, there was just a carousel of uh, color commentators, and I think Cheech would have been in that class. But I'm pretty sure we did an Ottawa game together at, at some point. And I was like, whatever the lowest rung of the play-by-play ladder was at the time. Um, this is Sportsnet or TSN? Yeah, no, that was Sportsnet. Okay. Uh, whatever the and look, I'm offended by saying that, and I just said it about myself because I started this business as a play-by-play guy. You know, oh. I did play-by-play for the Brandon Wheat Kings for a number of years. Were you good? First, I think it was okay. <laughs> I, I, I think that was okay. I was the first ever television voice of the Manitoba Moose. No they, kidding. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I did TV Like the Mike games. Keen Manitoba Moose, that, that era? Or what, what are you talking uh, about? Let me think about this. Scotty McCrory was on that team. Um, yeah, Keener might have been on that team. That's a good yeah. question. I mean, we did. Keener yeah. was on every Manitoba yeah. Moose team. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he we still did might like be there. <laughs> eight, ten games, something like that. It wasn't that significant. But I, yeah. I did call a, a handful of games of the Ottawa Senators, and uh, I'm pretty sure I did one with John but. I've worked so many games. I've spent so much time with John Garrett over the years. Uh, I mean, everybody's saying the same thing because he's on the farewell circuit here uh, Mm -hmm. with the Vancouver Canucks. But he's one of my favorite people, and not just because he's the ultimate pro, um, just because he's an all-round good dude. You know, when when you can go out and spend as much time as uh, Cheech obviously spends with Shorty, uh, and with Dan Murphy in that group, I know it because I lived it for a long period of time with John. So just one of the best in the business, no doubt. Decided, okay, play-by-play guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're selling yourself <laughs> short. Uh, marvelous stuff, Darren. Thank you for this. We'll catch up next Wednesday. All right, guys. Thanks.